Guten Tag. Let's talk about an introduction to non-equilibrium. And of course we do this in the context to finally get to some real devices down here. And for that we need to get into transport and non-equilibrium processes that uh, are driving drift diffusion and recombination and generation. So we need to get there from uh, what we learned about bulk materials, density of states and masses and the occupation factors. All these things we've done in the previous section. We now want to get to transport, but there's one thing we still need to get out of the way. So the question we're going to ask is how does a system get back to equilibrium once you kick it out of equilibrium? What are the relaxation methods or uh, processes in a semiconductor? And there is uh, two aspects we want to study there and understand. It's really understanding equilibrium, the re-establishment of equilibrium through transients and relaxation mechanisms and steady state. And then we'll talk about a variety of recombination and generation uh, processes sort of in an overview fashion in, in the second segment of this uh, lecture. All right. So, Let's assume you have some device in uh, equilibrium. You have some environmental variable and you can measure electron in hole density, say. And let's say you um, uh, place this uh, device in, in the environment and you change some parameter, some voltage or some um, temperature or, or like. Um, what happens is there will be some transient features and eventually you reach steady state uh, in your uh, in your device um, as a function of time. Okay, so um, we call that steady state, meaning there's no change in time anymore. So d d t d d t of all kinds of operators uh, a is zero. Okay, so no change in time of the overall system or quantity that you're looking at or measuring or controlling. Now, if you hit your system, say, with a spark of light and excite some carriers, you can measure those excitations over time and you can repeat those kind of experiments and do this multiple times. That is a you measure the transient behavior in a system. So, it's a different type of consideration you have for the materials and for the devices you consider, and you can expose different features and properties internal to the device with these kind of measurements. Okay? So, those are some terminologies that we need to just get under the belt, and we'll step through a couple of those. So, let's start with a simple explanation of what detailed balance is, in which that is equivalent to a, um, uh, the definition that we use for equilibrium. Okay, so consider this. A semiconductor has anywhere from 10 to the 17 to 20, 10 to the 20 uh, quote-unquote free electrons roaming around in the conduction band. And that's a lot of carriers. Um, they carry charge and they're occupying their representative density of states. They will scatter, they will interact with each other in a variety of different mechanisms. So it's a very busy place, there's a lot of things happening in there. But it can be in local equilibrium. That doesn't mean everybody's sitting tight or doesn't move. But what it means is that every process in the device that has, a, say, a forward process is counterbalanced with a reverse process. And you, there may be multiple processes going on in the device, an electron to electron scattering or an electron to phonon scattering. Whatever those multiple processes exist, in equilibrium, the counter process of one individual process will balance the other, uh, uh, the original process. So it overall looks like nothing is happening uh, as an integral sense, but there's a lot of actions internally going on. And this uh, definition, an equilibrium, each process is balanced by its counter process, is the definition of detailed balance and equilibrium. All right, that is very different from steady state. 
and provide you with another example of what steady state is in, in a few minutes. But uh, you have to appreciate that steady state, like no change in time, is different from every process count, uh, being balanced by its counter process. And here's a good analogy that Professor Alam had come up with the original version of his course here, where he says, consider um, interaction between countries. And uh, you have maybe people exchanging or goods exchanging. It doesn't really matter. If you look, for example, the interaction between the USA and Mexico, in some term or quantity, they might exchange back and forth two units of something. Okay, it could be particles, could be goods, whatever. It doesn't matter. From a conceptual point, one particular item or kind of item is going one way and the exact amount is going the other way. And if you look at a relationship where maybe with China, the same kind of uh, good can travel back and forth, but maybe at a different rate. So here in this example is three. But it's exactly three going one way and three going the other way between these two entities. Okay? And for India, you could have something similar, but maybe even yet a different rate. But the point is, each interaction between the countries is, has a forward and a reverse process, and they're exactly counterbalanced with each other. Okay? Now, that's a, a property of equilibrium. And the population of each of these countries or energy levels remains constant under detailed balance. So if you'd count uh, in and out connections out of the USA, in this example it's nine, nine in, nine out. Okay? All the numbers, are, uh, uh, for all the numbers and people are in a unit time. Okay? We can use this kind of concept of detailed balance for a variety of things. And it's been used in physics in a variety of aspects. Uh, you can derive the uh, Fermi-Dirac distribution, a Bose-Einstein distribution, and um, you can reduce the number of rates in a system. We'll use that extensively when we uh, calculate uh, relaxation via trap, recombination by traps, where we look into the detailed process of going up and down a certain um, a relaxation process. So, let's compare that to steady state. Okay? In steady state, unidirectional uh, forces can create non-equilibrium conditions. So, if you look, for example, here to India, you have uh, one connection coming in from China, five going out to the USA, and four coming in from the USA. So, it's Four, and 4 plus 1 coming in and 5 going out. So in a net sense, in steady state, India is uh, not changing the population of this kind of goods or, or um, exchanges. Okay, so the net flow in and out is 4 plus 1 and 5. So, it, so there's no net outflow per se. But not each of these processes is exactly counterbalanced. Now, if you look at, for example, Mexico in this example, there's 2 plus 1 coming in and 3 out, okay? And if you look at uh, the U.S. and China, you also then see imbalances. The point is, not each of these processes here is exactly counterbalanced. That's the issue. And if it's not exactly counterbalanced, then it's not in, st uh, in equilibrium, it's not detailed balance, but it's in steady state. So if you look at the US that has lots of connections, it's 12 in and 12 out, but not balanced with each country in this sense. So it's not in detailed balance, okay? But overall, if you just close the system overall, it looks like it, nothing is changing in time, okay? But it by itself, the system is not in detailed balance. And you can use this um, to calculate net fluxes in steady state um, uh, for each country. So you can look at it this way. But again, it's different 
from equilibrium. It's a fundamental thing you need to understand that um, equilibrium and steady state are quite different. In steady state, it looks like overall the system or the green circles do not change the population uh, of these goods or people in time. But each process is not counterbalanced with its uh, original process, like it is here. Okay? The system on the left is in, in detailed balance, the system on the right is in steady state. Now, if you kick one of those states, either the steady state or the a detailed balance state with some uh, new imbalance, you will have transients that will eventually change the population in time. So you will not have, a, you, you end up with a net influx or outflux out of a particular state. So that will be a transient response that changes over time that might drive towards, depending on how strong, say, a force is and how strong you can maintain it, uh, drive it into a new steady state, starting from another original steady state. Okay, that's the transient response. Okay, so it's critical that you understand the difference between steady state, detailed balance, and um, uh, uh, between these two. So um, detailed balance is equilibrium, steady state means DDT is equal to zero. Those two are not the same. Okay? In equilibrium, all the processes DDT are also zero. That's just a subset. In equilibrium, detailed balance, each process is counterbalanced by its original process. Okay? So, now let's look at some recombination and generation processes in, in these devices, and I'll see you in the next section.